Greetings, everyone. It's Anya again. And I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine whose name is Daryl Stenville Wells. She's an artist and an art educator. When we started the Nature Journal project, and I started practicing and sitting and uh, taking notes and trying to make careful drawings and thinking about pressing specimens, I suddenly thought, Daryl would really be able to help us with this project. So I contacted her and asked her, and she's come up with some wonderful projects that she's going to share with us that I think you're really going to enjoy doing at home. This afternoon. Good afternoon, Daryl. I'm so glad that you could help with this, and I'm so excited. Um, as you know, the reason that I originally thought to contact you was because about 10 years ago, you and I had a wonderful time working with some nine and 10 year old students, teaching them how to keep nature journals. And we took them to a park over the seasons. I think it was three different seasons made a bunch of observations. And I learned so much doing that. And so when I started these videos, I immediately thought of you. So I'm so excited and so happy that you've agreed to join in and help with this project. Hi, Anna. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. And um, I can't wait to get started. We have a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. I just realized that I don't think in my intro I talked at all about your new position that you've been doing for the last couple of years at the Linnaean Society. So just before we move on, can you say just a little bit about the cool projects that you're doing and your position at the Linnaean Society? Um, so I'm the Biomedia Meltdown Project Manager at the Linnaean Society of London. And so I run their interdisciplinary art and science project for mainly Key Stage 3 students, but also Upper Key Stage 2. And um, I go into London schools. Last year I went into 45 schools and gave 95 workshops um, teaching about biological subjects uh, with an art visual art approach. So um, last year I designed four projects. One was about um, fungi, called Funky Fungi. One was about taxonomy, that was Twisted Taxonomy. And one was a children's book illustration and animal anatomy, teaching about convergent evolution. And the fourth one was called Unsung Scientists, and it was about um, under-recognized scientists from history, particularly life scientists, and trying to make up uh, for that by, by recognizing their work and making portraits of them. So, so it's been a really fun project. I really appreciate being able to reach these young people all over London and challenge myself to use life science in conjunction with visual art and have each of them make the other richer. Let me just give you one example of a wonderful technique that uh, Daryl has taught me in working with children and making nature observations. It's very important to slow down and to look carefully and pay attention. And that can be very hard when you're first in a new place and starting to learn how to make sense of so many things around you. We spent uh, time going to a park and looking through the seasons and in the fall it's much easier because there's lots of color and lots of leaves and lots of bright interesting things but the winter months posed a whole different challenge and i wondered how was daryl going to help the students look and observe and engage in a winter landscape that's when Daryl introduced me to the concept in art of teaching about negative and positive space. And she did some lessons with the students before we went to the park. And then we made observations in the winter in the park. Sometimes when you're drawing or painting something that looks detailed or complex, it can be easier to focus on the space around the subject of your picture. This is called negative space. If you're distracted by the foreground object, try placing it in front of a contrasting background. It also helps to squint at the object. Here I am drawing some houseplants using negative space. Later I might go back and add the details to the foreground, 
but I can get a pretty detailed image of these just by drawing or painting the space around them. This is just one example of how a well-designed, well-thought-out set of lessons can have a huge impact on the things that students are able to do and see and draw when they are then in nature and are able to make their own nature journals. And that's what happened when we went to the park in the winter. They immediately began to draw the winter trees and the negative space between the bare branches, creating these beautiful images. And each tree had a unique and distinctive outline and shape. And it was so clear when you were looking at the negative space, the remaining shapes were so beautiful. And it taught me to look at trees completely differently. And I walk in the winter now and pay attention to the shapes of the branches and the architecture of the trees in a completely different way, just because of learning to stop and pause and look in that way. You know, when we first worked together with young people on a nature journal project, I wasn't a parent. But now I have an eight-year-old son, and we've really enjoyed exploring nature together through the nature journal that we share. So it's great fun for me to re-engage with this topic with him and collaborate in figuring out activities to do in the journal. We've got some great ideas in store for you, and I think your science and outdoor learning background adds so much to this for us as amateur naturalists. So stay tuned in the following weeks for some wonderful activities and ideas for you in your nature journals.